partnering with the Lord is an incredible honor. And I just want to pray over us because I believe that even as I share, the Lord is actually going to be encountering some of you. And I just want to give you the freedom to move. I want to give you the freedom to just close me off, shut me off. Please don't be loud about it. But I want to give you the freedom to encounter Jesus. And that's what that paper is for. We're going to do some exercises, but ultimately my heart is that you would hear how much Jesus loves you and that you would hear the places that he wants to take you. Okay, so Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Father, I thank you that you love us. And I thank you that you have good things for us. Jesus, I thank you that you walk with us, that you are a friend, and I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you that every wall has been broken because of your blood. Because of your resurrection, we have freedom. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that you dwell inside of each one of us and you are the witness. I thank you that all wisdom and understanding comes from you. So Holy Spirit, I give you freedom right now to move in this room, to encounter us in a powerful way today. In Jesus' name. I want you all to stand and we are going to make some declarations. Don't be afraid. I wouldn't have you say anything weird. I hear that nervous laughter. And I want you to repeat after me. You can close your eyes or you can do whatever you need to do. Put your hand on your heart. And I want you to say, I hear the Lord because I am his child. My heavenly father enjoys spending time with me. My heavenly father created me for connection. I declare my heart, my mind, my spirit, and my body is the Lord's. I invite him to come and speak to me. I will take notice of his whispers and I will choose to write them down because what my father speaks is important to me. I give you permission to use whatever manner you desire to encounter me, Lord. Amen. You can be seated. So earlier this year, I had a dream. And do, how many dreamers are in here right now? Okay. For me, the Lord often speaks to me in dreams, and then he wakes me up, and he corresponds the dreams with passages of Scripture. And so earlier this year, I had a dream, and I was in a place like Hawaii, Thank you, Lord. Uh, those kinds of dreams are always welcome. So I was in a place like Hawaii, and I was in a cove, and I actually went to um, take a paddleboard out. The water was really nice, very calm, and there was very little life in the water, which for me, it made it easy to do what I wanted to do. And there was somebody on the dock, and... As I was listening to that person on the dock, I I've got the feeling that that person was actually a guide, and they were telling me th obstacles to avoid. But that day, there weren't very many obstacles in the water, so it was pretty easy for me. The next day, I went back to that same place, to that same place where the water was, and the guide told me from the dock that the water had shifted. This day, the water was a little warmer, and the water was teeming with wildlife just under the surface. And as I got on my paddleboard and I paddled out to the middle of the cove, I noticed in the distance there was a shark. There were actually three of them. And one of them came right up to my board. This is a dream, okay? I have no, no shark scars. This shark came right up to me with its mouth open. And I took my hand and I hit it in the nose and I kicked it in the face. 
I'm usually not a violent person, but it seemed appropriate at the time. And that shark swam away from me. And when it swam away, I watched it get two more sharks. And there was a frenzy in the water that began to happen. As I watched this happen in the water, I realized that everyone's attention was going towards this frenzy that was in the water. When I woke up from that dream, I asked the Lord, what in the world are you showing me? And he said to me, there is a chaos that has been released in the world right now. That chaos is three spirits, spirit of fear, spirit of control, and a manipulative spirit. And those three spirits are causing a frenzy in our world right now. And the Lord simply was telling me, my people need to rise up. My people need to hear my voice for the strategy. My strategy in that dream was to kick it in the face. But that's where we are today. And I want to talk to you about what it looks like to hear the voice of the Lord. Because whenever we hear the voice of the Lord, it is an invitation. An invitation. He is asking us to come and press in. But whenever he reveals something, do you know that it's an invitation? That we don't just receive that revelation and sit on it. But when he gives us revelation, it's an invitation to participate with heaven. It's an invitation to participate with his kingdom. So what we have to do is we actually have to act in obedience of what he's revealing to us. If we want more, raise your hand if you want more. If we want more prophetically, it comes with obedience. It comes with the invitation to do something with what he's telling us. Sometimes there are things that stand in our way. And I want to tell you a story about my husband. He's not here. Uh, thank goodness. None of you on, on the team can tell him this. But probably, we've been married for 30 years. And about 28 years ago, we were at some friend's house. Um, we lived in Woodland, California. We went to some friend's house in Davis. They were new, new friends to us. And um, they had made ribs for us for dinner. Can I just tell you, if you are thinking of making ribs for uh, new friends, maybe, maybe skip it on the first like friend date and maybe do something a little easier than ribs because here's what happened. So we had dinner and then we continued after dinner, we sat at the table and we just continued to visit with this couple, lovely couple. And um, about two hours after we had eaten dinner, uh, Casey, my husband went to the bathroom and he came back out and he said, so how long were you all gonna let that barbecue sauce that was about the size of a quarter stay on my mouth without telling me? And I thought, because my husband, if you haven't ever met him, he has a humor. And so I assumed that he knew because a quarter size blob of barbecue sauce on your face, how can one not know that and not feel, dude, you have barbecue sauce on your face. How can you not know that it is right there? And furthermore, these people have mirrors all over in their dining room and in their living room. So how can you not see? How can you not for two hours not see and look that you have barbecue sauce on your face? I can understand if you had a beard like Steve, but he didn't have a beard like you, Steve. His face was clean shaven. So how in the world could he not know that the barbecue sauce was on his face? But he was offended. <laughs> no, Kathy, there is no sympathy for Casey Fry. He was offended because nobody told him, dude, you have barbecue sauce right there. Like right there, you have a napkin, use it. And it's because we all thought he was trying to be funny. And of course, like, why would I tell you, you know, you've got that if I think you're doing it on purpose. Now I'm just trying to ignore you because I think you're doing it on purpose. So here's, here's what I want to tell you. Can I be real with you? 
There are things that keep us from going deeper and going higher with the Lord. And sometimes it is like the barbecue sauce blob. None of you have barbecue sauce on your face right now. Let me tell you, I would tell you. I've learned my lesson. But the reality is sometimes there are things that we have that keep us from going to those deeper places and those higher heights. And unless we ask the Lord, we can't go any further. But his desire is that we would let loose of everything that is holding us back. The desire of our Heavenly Father is that we wouldn't look to anything else except for Him. So I want us to do, this is why, one of the reasons why you have that blank piece of paper. We are going to simply start, and I'm going to say the one thing. I want you to write the one thing on the top of your paper, and it isn't going to take much space. This is often... The question that I ask the Lord is, what is the one thing? What is the one thing that you want me to remove out of my life so that I can go up higher with you and see from your perspective? And can I just be honest with you? Even yesterday, as I was talking to the Lord and he was telling me about the one thing, can I tell you that he did this with me? Because as I was scrolling through my Instagram, there were some accounts that usually I lean into to just hear what's going on in the world. And yesterday, the Lord was like, do you know, daughter, that you can actually lean into me to understand what's going on in the world? You don't need to lean into what you think you need to lean into. So I want you to close your eyes and I want you to just ask the Lord, Lord, what is the one thing that you would like for me to release to you today? This isn't a laundry list. This is a one thing. And when he tells you, I want you to write it down. And now I want you to say, Jesus, I give you this one thing. And I want you to ask him, Jesus, what would you like to give me in its place? And whatever he reveals, I want you to cross out that one thing and I want you to rewrite what he wants to give you in its place. There is an interesting thing uh, and this isn't in my notes, but uh, I feel the Holy Spirit on it. And in Genesis, the Lord actually, if you remember, there was a garden. And there were two trees that we are told about in the garden, right? The, the tree of life and the tree of... Thank you. All of you who have been in Sunday school and seen the flannel graphs of those two trees. We bless those flannel graphs in Jesus' name. Um, so we have the tree of life and we have the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? And Adam and Eve in their youngness, we know that they were immature when they were in the garden because they were young. They had just been created. And so the Lord actually told them you cultivate and tend everything in the garden, 
except do not eat of this tree, of the wisdom, of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of it. What I find really interesting is in this passage, God is telling them to cultivate and tend everything in the garden. And so if you're like me, I've heard all of my life, that tree is not, is not good. You shouldn't eat of it. But it's not like our father to actually have something that he would tell his children, cultivate and tend, but don't eat of it because it's bad fruit. So here's what I want to share with you. 33 generations later, Solomon. Are you familiar with Solomon, King Solomon? King Solomon is awakened in the middle of the night, and the Lord says to King Solomon, what would you like? Because Solomon has just been given the kingdom from his father, King David. And Solomon asked something of the Lord. He asked the Lord, I need wisdom to discern good and evil because you've given me this great people, but I'm too young. Solomon actually says I'm a child and I don't have the wisdom to lead these people. Do you know what the Lord does in that moment? The Lord actually releases to Solomon the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. He releases wisdom to Solomon. So here, what generations before were supposed to cultivate and tend, but not eat yet, Solomon is receiving the gift of that. He's receiving the gift of wisdom. He's receiving the gift of discernment 33 generations later. Why is that important? Because there are some things, I'm telling you, body of Christ, brothers and sisters, that you have been cultivating and tending, cultivating and tending. And the Lord is saying, it is time for you to eat of that fruit. It is time for you to eat of that fruit because that is what is going to carry you into the new season. The spirit of wisdom and truth is what we need in this season. Some of us are cultivating and tending the same things that have been in our garden for a very long time. The reason why Adam and Eve were not able to take that fruit and eat it is because they didn't have anyone who they needed to lead. They needed to sit under the love and the tree of life of our Heavenly Father. Does that make sense? In first in John chapter 20, verse 19, let me set the tone for this passage. It's a familiar passage. Jesus has resurrected. It's right before Acts. And this is in the season where Jesus comes back and for 50 days, he's walking with his disciples. And so in John 20, verse 19, Jesus does a peculiar thing with his disciples. He actually blows on them. He breathes on them. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. But we know that whatever they received wasn't visible at that moment because in Acts chapter two, we know that that was the moment of Pentecost. But Jesus was doing something so peculiar. He was breathing on them. Here's the crazy thing. Do you know that there is only one other time where that kind of breath is described in the Bible. What Jesus did in that moment, he breathed on them in Genesis 2, 7. When life is created and God breathed into Adam new life, that was the only other time that that kind of breath released into a person brings new life to them. In this moment, what Jesus is doing over his disciples is actually providing them a way to be a new creation, that they would be able to host the kingdom of God like never before. Because before they actually walked in kingdom ways, but they didn't have the kingdom residing inside of them. So in that moment when Jesus breathed on them, he birthed something new in them. 
He birthed the ability for them to carry his kingdom. Because if they carried his kingdom inside of them, what would they be releasing everywhere they go? His kingdom. And can I tell you that you too were created to carry his kingdom, to release it everywhere you go, not just in this building, not just in our homes. That's important, but we don't stop there. We continue to release it everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, I believe I have something in me that every person I come across has to encounter. I have the light. I have the living one. I have the savior, the redeemer, the healer. I have my father's kingdom right here inside of me. Everywhere I go, I have to release that. It is what our world needs. What our world needs is inside of me. It's inside of you. Joe was talking about it. It is being an ambassador, not of this world, not of America, not of California, but being a heavenly ambassador and releasing it everywhere we go. In that passage, it says, the Lord God formed man from dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. That word living right there is pronounced hi or whatever, hey. But it means green, flowing with fresh water, lively, active, reviving of springtime. That is what happened when Jesus breathed on his disciples. They became alive. They became ready. But then what we see in Acts chapter 2 is the completion of that process. They became alive to receive everything that the Father needed them to receive. In Acts chapter 2, they were ready to receive it. And I feel like today the Lord has specific things for each one of you. He wants you to be ready to receive it. I want to do one more activation with you. But this is a beautiful passage that I want to share with you. It's found in Ezekiel 47, if you're familiar with it. Ezekiel 47 is such an interesting picture. And um, I'm trying to see Linda. Linda, can you come here for just a minute? So I want to share with you, in Ezekiel 47, we have this passage of the Lord actually, I'm going to have you come up here, friend of the Lord actually taking Ezekiel by the hand. And the Lord measures a thousand cubits and walks Ezekiel down so that Ezekiel is only in water, deep water. But then the Lord measures further and walks Ezekiel further. And what happens is it comes to Ezekiel's knees. The water comes to Ezekiel's knees and then measures further and walks until the water is at Ezekiel's waist and then measures more until the water is over Ezekiel's head. Thank you, sweet friend. What happens in that moment is Ezekiel is led back to the banks of the shore. Here's the crazy thing. What Ezekiel sees in that moment is that on the banks of the shore are trees that are filled with healing. Why didn't Ezekiel see that before? Why didn't he see that when he was ankle deep? Why didn't he see that when he was knee deep or waist deep? It wasn't until the Holy Spirit overflows Ezekiel and he couldn't even walk anymore that he was brought back to the shore and everything changed. His vision changed. His perspective changed. 
What he was able to see is available to him and every person on the planet completely changed in that moment. Can I tell you that when you are overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit, your vision changes, your perspective changes. Suddenly, hope is stirred up in you and faith is stirred up in you. And you begin to ask the Lord, what do you say about this person? What do you say about this person? What do you say over California? Can I tell you earlier this year, I just want to share this prophetic word. This morning, um, the Lord was reminding me you, that earlier this year, I was sitting with him asking him about California. And the Lord gave me this prophetic vision. He took me into a vision and I saw the middle of our state. And I saw a crystal ball that had been raised up in our capital. And it reflected and carried what people have spoken over our state. The ball was filled with words and declarations about California, but it did not carry the word our Father speaks over California. I saw several hands take this ball, crystal ball, and throw it to the ground. It shattered what has been spoken over our state, and it released the curses off of our state. When I asked the Lord what the hands that grabbed that crystal ball actually represented, this is what he told me. I heard him say there were seven hands, hands of worship, hands of intercession, hands of truth, hands of mission, hands of discipleship, hands of leadership, and hands of holiness. Those seven ways he is calling for the strongholds over our state to be shattered and for freedom to come. I heard voices from the ground crying out, and I asked the Lord, what am I hearing? Whew. He said to me, these are the voices of the legacies lost. This hold on the state of California has held back legacies of the families here in California. And I saw, as I saw that crystal ball be shattered, I saw family legacies restored. And then I saw them released to the families who call California their home. And then I heard the Lord say, fill the altar, fill the altar. I saw an entire room be moved to their knees at the altar and I saw the altar tip like a scale. And the scale tipped because all of his children were at the altar. And then I saw Jesus walk behind them. And he joined them at the altar. And angels began ministering to those at the altar. And they got up and they began to move as if they had just been touched with a breath that brought them boldness and passion. I saw Jesus blow behind them as they move and his breath lifted them and sent them and it bolstered them up to accomplish what they were always described to do for the heavenly purposes of God here on the earth. I want to tell you that all that took for me to receive that word, that prophetic word from the Lord, was time and a question of, Lord, what is your heartbeat for my state? What do you speak and what do you see? And then I waited. I want to tell you that without vision, we don't have anything to pull on and release. 
And there's a passage in Proverbs that talks about how lost we are if we don't have prophetic vision. That's why the prophetic is so important. It is also why the enemy would like to have you stop declaring what is over your family's life. I just bless you two. Are you two married? What are your names? I just bless you in Jesus' name. Everything that the Lord has put on you and your family that has not been grabbed a hold of yet, I bless you too to be able to speak that, to be able to declare that. I bless you and your family and your children. Lord, everything that you have put on these two, I see that, Stephanie, what is on your family line, and is it Nick? What is on your family line, I see that it fits like a puzzle piece together. And it's been disjointed before, but I see the Lord actually putting you two together like a puzzle piece. And so, Lord, I thank you for this couple. Everything that you have intended for them to carry, Lord, I pray that it would be released over them right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I bless you both. So getting back to Ezekiel. We have this moment where Ezekiel allows the Lord to lead him over his head. That even his feet couldn't touch the ground. Can I tell you how unsettling that is to have the Lord lead you somewhere where it's like, I can't even touch the ground, Lord. This is all on you. Can I encourage you that that is what he wants for you to do? is allow him to lead you so deep in his water of the Holy Spirit that you cannot touch the ground, that the dependency on his hand is the dependency that we have. But if you allow him to do this with you, can I tell you that the vision and revelation that you will receive is strategies needed for your family, for your neighborhood, for your city, for your church, for your ministry, for your region, for your state, for your nation, for the world. Can I encourage you that there is no limit to what the Lord wants to speak to you about? And so I want to invite you right now to close your eyes. And I want you to envision yourself where you are today And you can envision yourself on a dock. And those who, those who have a hard time or a difficulty envisioning, I just bless your mind right now in Jesus' name that your mind would be sanctified in the Lord, that your imagination would be sanctified. And if you're a thinker, I bless the way that the Lord encounters you. And I give you permission to think about what would take place. I want you to imagine that you are on a dock right now. And I want you to ask Jesus, Jesus, will you come to me? And I want you to ask him, will you take me somewhere new with you? And some of you, he grabs a hold of your hand and he asks you to step into his boat with him. And while you go with him, I just want you to ask him, what do you want to tell me right now? Where are we going? What do I need to know? Some of you, this is a familiar place, and he is reminding you once again of the dreams and the call that has been on your life for a very long time.
I want you to go ahead and open your eyes. And I just want you to write down on that blank piece of paper a couple of key words of what Jesus said to you. And I would encourage you sometime soon to go back to that place with Jesus and allow him to speak more. Earlier this year, our oldest son uh, was listening to me on a call with our team, and we, we were releasing the prophetic word that we had for the year over our team. And after the call, my 22 year old came up to me and he said, Mom, you just went on and on and on about everything that the Lord had told you. And he said, how do you hear the Lord like that? And so I got to tell him that with me and the Lord, it's a two-way conversation. And in that two-way conversation, I ask the Lord, what's on your heart? And then he reveals it. And then I ask him, what is going on? What can you tell me? Why do you feel this way about these people? And it is this two-way conversation until I feel like he has given me everything that he wants to give me. And my son was fascinated because he got to hear and overhear my sacred place conversation with the Lord, and it was intriguing to him. I want to encourage you that there is a reason why the Lord speaks to us and reveals to us. There's a familiar passage. I have no idea where it is in my notes, so I'll just keep talking. How many of you are familiar with Ananias and Sapphira? Okay. So there's a story of Ananias and Sapphira, New Testament. Everyone had decided. Peter had given this long speech, and then everyone came together who was in the body of Christ. They decide that they're going to pool their resources together. So everybody does that. Everybody sells land. They come and bring it in. Ananias and Sapphira, one by one, they come in. They don't give everything. But that was what the body of Christ had decided that they would do, was they would come and they would present everything. So Ananias and Sapphira, a married couple, they come in and they actually only present part of what they had been given. And what happens? What happened to them? They died. They were struck dead. Sometimes I teach a prophetic course for Randy Clark, and none of my students like that story. I can understand why. It's harsh. Here's the crazy thing. A few chapters later, do you know what happens in that same region? A famine comes over the entire area. It was a worldwide famine, and it was prophesied before it happened. So when it was prophesied before it happened, what, the, what they did, what the believers did was they came together, they pulled their resources. Because they pulled their resources and they had that community aspect already birthed in them, they were able to help the other believers in the area. This comes on the heels of Ananias and Sapphira. What the Lord was trying to do in that moment was he was trying to cultivate a community that would freely give, would help. And I want to tell you that recently with the crisis of Ukraine, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what is on your heart? What would you like me to know about this crisis? What I saw was I saw the body of Christ actually standing up and being the ones who actually helped financially. Going, I bless you, in Jesus' name, Amy, and your yes to him to do truly the works of Jesus. Yeah. I bless for this to only be the first time that you are a first responder in Jesus' name. And I bless the funding that you need to do what he has called you to do. Thank you, Lord. So the prophetic 
they heard that there was a famine coming. And because they heard the famine was coming, they were able to position themselves in obedience That is what the prophetic does, is it gives us a vision. We get to say, now I have it. I have this vision of what the Lord wants to do. And now I have invitation to step in. So those believers stepped in. Because they stepped in, the famine, although it was worldwide, it didn't touch the body of Christ. Can I tell you that that is what we need? We need strategy, not only for ourselves, but we need strategy when people ask, how come the world is in chaos and the world doesn't carry peace, but I see peace on you. I see peace on you and you. You carry the radiance of the Lord. I just want to tell you that, that that what he has on your life is stunning. And so I just bless you in Jesus' name. We are supposed to look different. We are supposed to be those who walk with the kingdom inside of us. We carry strategy. We go to the deeper places and the higher heights. We don't go to the news. We don't go to other people. But we sit with the Lord. We ponder his wisdom. So I want you to stand up. We have about 16 minutes. So now that we all know each other on a very intimate level, and none of you are going to tell my husband that I told you all the story about barbecue sauce, here is what I'm going to ask of you. I do want our team to pray for each one of you, and this is going to be a little tricky, so you need to follow directions. Can everyone follow directions? Who laughed? I heard somebody laugh at that. Is my 17-year-old in the room? No, I'm just kidding. Honestly, because I know above all of the teaching that I could give you, that anyone could give you, if you have a face-to-face encounter with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, you will walk out of here today and be completely changed. And it isn't just one time. But we have those encounters with him over and over and over and over. Because here's what he does. He preps us for the next season to come. Do you know that there's a next season to come? There's a new chapter in your life that he wants to write. And he's beginning to write it today. And so I want our team to pray over you. And so I'm just going to ask you if you would go against the walls of the church and put your back against the walls all around the sanctuary. And if we could have some music, if we can't, that's fine too. Just really, okay. And we are just gonna quickly pray for you. If you cannot, for physical reasons, if you can't get to a wall, just stay where you are and we will have team that prays for you right there. So Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the spirit of revelation and truth. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are wisdom. And Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for every single person in this room, everything that you want to release to them today. No. Lord, I pray that you would breathe on them so that they would receive everything in your kingdom. Lord, I thank you for the generational blessing that you wanna release to them today in Jesus' name. Lord, those places in their family legacy that have been bound up, in Jesus' name, I break those chains, binding up family legacies right now. Lord, I pray that you would release it on them. Lord, I pray for the families in this room. Ho. Oh. Lord, I thank you because of their yes. Here's what I see. My family, we own a boat. And when our boat has the wake behind it, 
Can I tell you that everything in close proximity gets caught up in that wake and it goes with the flow of our boat. So some of you have been pushing hard, pushing hard, following the Lord for your own life. What I see is your family, your children, your grandchildren, because you've been pushing hard. This is a season where your grandchildren will be caught up in the wake of your family's boat. It seems like they've been far. But I hear the Lord say, no more. I hear the Lord say that what you have fought for, continue to pursue him. Your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren will get caught up in the wave of the Holy Spirit just like you did. So I release a fresh impartation of his Holy Spirit in this room today. Lord, that you would come and have your way in this place. Encounter your sons and daughters in Jesus' name. I want you to stay in a posture of receiving as our team comes. I don't want you to move your feet. If you feel like you're going to go down, I'm going to ask you just to sit down. We want to pray a blessing over you. And it's going to be quick. Sometimes, even when it seems like the Lord hasn't touched you in a powerful way, I can tell you that the Lord is releasing something to you. Oh, it is like a seed that he is planting in you. And it will germinate. It will germinate. So I just invite you to stay in this posture One last thing, when we come to you and we begin praying over you and releasing what the Lord has, I want you to receive. Oftentimes we feel like we have to begin praying or praying in tongues. But when we come to you, just receive everything that he wants to release to you.